uh, now that Bernie's staffing up, uh, the corporate media, not only is the corporate media not going to focus on the issues, they're certainly not going to be talking about Medicare for all, free public college, climate change. They'll be talking about it as in this radical, this isn't really doable, you know, how, how are we going to pay for it? Wait, $715 billion to the military? No problem. We could pay for that. Oh, you want to do free college? You want, you, you want health care for everybody? How are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? You see how you see how the corporate media works, but the corporate media is in has been in a tizzy, basically since I was on the campaign trail, basically declaring President Trump a, a Russian agent, uh, saying his campaign colluded with Russia. All of this stuff. Now I've said I'm totally for uh, the Mueller investigation. Have no problem with that. Uh, I think, you know, there should be an investigation. I think I've said from day one. I think it's highly likely Robert Mueller is going to find a big, big trail, a big, big trail of money laundering. And I think business, uh, inappropriate business ties with the Trump organization, uh, his real estate holdings, maybe even the Trump Foundation with Russian oligarchs. I think that's very clear that 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 is something he's going to find. Do I think that Donald Trump's campaign like coordinated with Russia to hack Hillary, uh, John Podesta's emails of a DNC emails and then distribute it. I haven't seen firm evidence of that. And if you remember, that was the original charge. That was the original Russiagate hysteria was that Trump, Trump worked with Russia to get the WikiLeaks emails out. So, well, I, I hate to tell you for, for the Russiagate. Into, oh, by the way, if you, if you haven't known, because I haven't covered this yet, uh, new developments, which I actually do think is a big deal, but you know, the FBI, who knows if there were political motivations behind this. The FBI opened an inquiry into whether Trump was secretly working on behalf of Russia. Uh, in the days after President Trump fired James Comey as FBI director, law enforcement officials became so concerned by the president's behavior that they began investigating whether he had been working on behalf of Russian Russia against American interests, according to former law enforcement officials and other f others familiar with the investigation. The inquiry carried explosive implications. Counterintelligence investigators had to consider whether the president's own actions constituted a possible threat to national security. Agents also sought to determine whether Mr. Trump was knowingly working for Russia or had unwittingly fallen under Moscow's influence. The investigation the FBI opened into Mr. Trump also had a criminal aspect, which has long been publicly known, whether his firing of Mr. Comey constituted obstruction of justice. Another uh, quote bombshell that came out that the corporate media is totally, totally uh, in a tizzy about is that President Trump apparently uh, has been protecting, uh, concealing uh, the notes from his one-on-one -on -one meeting with President Putin. President Trump has gone to extraordinary lengths to conceal details of his conversations with Russian President Vladimir Putin, including on at least one occasion taking possession of the notes of his own interpreter and instructing the linguist not to discuss what had transpired with other administration officials, current and former U.S. officials said. So there you have it. That's like the big thing that they've been talking about quite a lot. For the Russiagate crowd, their head is exploding. This is the smoking gun. Uh, what's his name? Max Boot wrote a, wrote a piece, 18, 18 reasons, 18 clues that Trump is working for Russia. I mean, my God, it's like, it, it, it literally, it, it's, 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 it's getting to a point where it, it's, it's more entertaining than watching Rocky IV, if you ask me. I mean, this is some really, really like thick, crazy espionage. It, it's like a movie plot that, that if you went to this, if you went to a filmmaker with this kind of movie plot, they'd say, not believable. It wouldn't fly. Too outlandish. Too outlandish. Well, Jonathan Carl with ABC News, he unfortunately for the Russiagate folks. Uh, well, well, look, I mean, the, the story in the New York Times was an extraordinary reflection of the level of distrust between the FBI leadership and the president and the, the, how suspicious the president's behavior was, that they actually were at, at the, the, to the point of investigating. The letters about firing Comey, the interview with Lester Holt. Yes. And, and, and actually going to the point of investigating whether or not effectively the president was a Russian agent. But what I am getting is that this is all building up to the Mueller report and raising expectations of a bombshell report. And there have been expectations that have been building, of course, for over a year on this. But people who are closest 
uh, to, to what Mueller has been doing, who have interacted with the special counsel, cautioned me that this report is almost certain to be anticlimactic. That if you look at what the FBI was investigating in that New York Times report, you look at what they were investigating, Mueller did not go anywhere with that investigation. He has been writing his report in real time through these indictments, and we have seen nothing from Mueller on the central question of was there any coordination, collusion, with the Russians in the effort to meddle in the elections? Or was there even any knowledge on the part so, of the president or anybody in his campaign with what the Russians were doing? They haven't laid that no out yet in the that. indictments, but how do things like the Trump Tower meeting with Russians, Don Jr., uh, Paul Manafort, Paul Manafort giving polling data to Ukrainian oligarchs, the pursuit of a Trump Tower in Moscow, how does that fit into this theory? We, we, what we've certainly seen over and over again is the people around the president, first of all, have been willing to lie to investigation, investigators and had their own dealings with Russians, had their own uh, agendas with Russians. Manafort was trying to get paid for, for, for his work on, on behalf of Ukraine. Uh, Flynn had his own dealings. Uh, but, but it is not added up to anything of the central question again, was there anybody, was the Trump campaign aware of or coordinating with the Russians in their effort to meddle with the election? So far, there's been nothing on that. And I'm led to believe, don't expect there's going to be Senator anything. Heike, one this reminds me, when I was when I was 16, okay, I had a real, real crush on a girl named Lauren Karp. I don't know what she's doing now, but I had such a crush on her, and I would ask her out, and I'd ask her out, and I'd ask her out, and she'd say no, and she'd say no, and she'd say no, and she'd say, oh, Jordan, you're funny, but, you know, I'm not interested, blah, 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 blah. But I just kept on going, I kept on going because I had idealized, I had idolized her. In my mind, I, I just so wanted her to go out with me. I, I thought she was, you know, going to be my wife. I thought she was my dream. She was my dream. She finally said yes. She finally said yes. We go out. I, I put out all the stops. I take her out for very di uh, a fancy dinner. My father helped me out, gave me some money, and it was a complete dud. Contrary to what I had thought. I was kind of bored, to tell you the truth. So this might not be the perfect analogy, but Russiagate, Russiagate is kind of like the girl I just described, you know? It's what Rachel Maddow has wanted for so long. It's what CNN has wanted for so long. It's what all the Clinton world has wanted for so long to justify why they lost to an orange orangutan. And unfortunately... Unfortunately, it doesn't, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem that it's going to be that. And I've said this all along, but I was, I was um, told, you know, this is a Republican talking point. I, I've always been told Washington is a city. You can't keep anything. You cannot keep anything secret in Washington for too long. If, if Robert Mueller had cold, hard proof that Donald Trump had, or his campaign, had coordinated with the Russian government to hack Podesta's emails, to hack the DNC's emails, and distribute them uh, in the last month of the campaign, that would have been out long ago. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait for Rachel Maddow, when this report comes out, to make it seem, to play it up like it's the next, like it literally is uh, worse than, you know, the Cuban Missile Crisis or something like that. Yes, five people are going to prison, but not for collusion. There's nobody that's going to prison for collusion. Michael Cohen, he's not going to prison for collusion. Michael Flynn, he's not going to prison for collusion. And this is why I haven't covered this that much, because I don't just do things for clicks. You know what? If I wanted to grow, let's say status quo didn't exist, and I just created a YouTube channel tomorrow brand new YouTube channel, and I wanted to grow like crazy. You know what I would do? I would do every single video on Russiagate. I would say that Trump is literally, you know, uh, Mikhail, Mikhail, Mikhail Gorbachev reincarnated. I would do every single video on Russia, Russiagate. I would be more of a conspiracy theorist than Rachel Maddow, Max Boot, uh, Bill Kristol, and all these people combined, and I, my channel would explode. But I live in reality. And honestly, Rachel Maddow, I have never seen the evolution of somebody on television, in the news business,
who at one time had a little bit of integrity. I'm going I'm to admit, I used to really like Rachel Maddow back in the day. She used to cover things nobody else covered. In the beginning, she did cover Flint. In the beginning, more than anyone else, she introduced it to the United States. Uh, and she deserves credit for that. She basically abandoned Flint after that. But in, in the beginning, she did. But essentially, you have right there the ABC reporter saying, I have sources close to Mueller's campaign that it's going to be a big letdown for for the Russiagate truthers. And I, I just wonder, what is Rachel Maddow going to do when this is over? What is Morning Joe going to do when this is over? What is, uh, you know, frankly, the Democratic Party, who has become more hawkish, more hawkish against Russia and trying to reignite the Cold War, what are they going to do? Uh, are they going to, because honestly, if you ask me, Russiagate has kind of become the new Benghazi in, in corporate media and democratic politics. Uh, you know, when Fox News was railing for years about Benghazi and the scandal and all this stuff, it, it's become like that. I mean, at a certain point, reality has to sink in. And I hate to say this because I, I don't have any, it, there's no, I have no skin in the game. I don't like Donald Trump. I'd like to see Donald Trump defeated in 2020 by a progressive. I wouldn't mind, you know, I don't, I think, be careful what you wish for as far as getting Mike Pence, you know, all these people impeach Donald Trump. Be careful what you wish for, folks, because it could get a lot worse than Donald Trump with a, a, a zealot, a Christian fundamentalist zealot who's also very competent. So be careful what you wish for. But, you know, I just find it so amazing that for two and a half years, I've been attacked, Jimmy Dore's been attacked, uh, Lee Camp's been attacked. Chris Hedges has been attacked. All, and frankly, if I'm keeping it real, folks, if I'm keeping it real, my old, my old stomping grounds before I was let go, they were hysterical about this Russiagate business all the time. I mean, I don't really watch the Young Turks anymore, but I'm pretty sure they've been keeping up with Russiagate, Russiagate, Russiagate. Because, frankly, Jank and a lot of them there have a really, really bad case of Trump derangement syndrome and have kind of lost sight with anything else going on in the country. Apparently, they think that America was just super on January 19th, 2017. And it only, only became terrible on January 20th, 2017. Well, you got the Young Turks doing it nonstop. Frankly, Democracy Now! has bought into a lot of this. Uh, I, I interviewed Aaron Matte, who used to be at The Real News, and he also had criticisms about independent media that's bought into this. Two things could be true. You're okay with an investigation, but you also say, let's wait to see what the findings are. And until that, do we have to talk about this 24-7? Do we have to spec? Do we have to just engage in pure speculation? Uh, people are power. I agree. Like, what about Flint? What about Cleveland, which I'm about to report on you, has insane lead levels? What about fracking and the pipelines? spreading everywhere. I just did an interview yesterday, which is up on the channel. Canada might be the next standing rock. I just interviewed a land and water protector from Canada about the fight against the coastal gas link pipeline. You hearing about that anywhere else, folks? I look in the comments. Nobody even knew there was a camp against this pipeline. Yes, it's in Canada, but it's still relevant. I mean, I'm not big on like doing victory laps, but I am going to do a victory sprint when this Mueller report comes out. Because I am here to tell you, folks, I think a lot of the people like Jimmy Dore, like me, like Lee Camp, like Aaron Maté, like a lot of progressive Jamal Thomas, uh, Kyle Kalinske, I think a lot of people that have been called kooky conspirators, kook, kooky conspiracy theorists, agents of the Kremlin, a lot of messages that I was working for Vladimir Putin. Hey, if I'm working for Vladimir Putin, can he pay, can he give me a raise so I don't have to keep doing these Sunday marathon live streams to fundraise? You think I want to go live every single Sunday for the rest of my life for six to seven hours? I digress. I enjoy doing it. So uh, a lot of people that have literally put all of their eggs in this Russiagate bucket are going to have very, very sad faces. That doesn't mean Donald Trump, that report's not going to show money laundering. I think it will. It doesn't mean it's not going to show inappropriate contacts with Russian oligarchs or whatever. doesn't mean it's not going to show very, very terrible corrupt things with his business. I think it will. 
I think that's why he never released his tax returns, because his tax returns will show his business dealings with Russia. And it will also show he's not a billionaire. That's why he didn't want to release his tax returns. But at its most basic core root, does anybody think Donald Trump is intelligent or effective enough to collude, whatever that means, collude, with a foreign government? And by the way, if we're going to worry about collusion, how about collusion between the United States and Saudi Arabia? How about collusion between the United States and Israel? And by the way, I mean, I haven't covered it yet. I'm going to. We're now putting forth bills. Marco Rubio is putting forth a bill to make it illegal to protest Israel. Like, whether you're for Israel or against, this is the United States of America, or it's supposed to be a democracy. You can't make a bill to make it criminal or, or shut off people's businesses if they support boycotting and divesting Israel. I have a very, very religious father. He's very, very Zionist. He thinks Israel could do no wrong. We don't really talk about it because I, I have a different opinion. I love my father. I, I love him. We have a great relationship, but I disagree with him on a lot of things when it comes to Israel. But Marco Rubio is pushing a bill to literally make it criminal that you, if you're part of the boycott and divest system or movement, this is America. People can be a part of a boycott and divest movement if they so choose. It doesn't matter. It's not about whether you're for Israel, whether you're not, whether you're pro-Palestinian, whether you're not. This is about freedom of speech and freedom of choice.